everyone, my name is Chef Melissa Smith from SoletTheMeatCake.com and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a recipe for these warm delicious cookies called brown butter Linzer cookies. This recipe is unique because you put warm winter spices like cardamom and ginger in the crust of the cookie and then you fill it with apricot jam to finish. This video is sponsored by Jason from The Realtor Contractor, so thank you Jason. Okay, let's get started. So to start these cookies, we begin by browning the butter in a saucepan. To do that, we put it into a saucepan at like medium high heat and we let it boil on for probably four minutes or so until the milk solids at the bottom start to brown. We do this because it brings out the nuttiness of the butter. And later on when we add the ginger and the cardamom, it'll complement those flavors and pull it out and get that nice, delicious, warm winter feeling that we're going for. So I have my butter on the stove and it's browning beautifully right now. It's actually perfect. So you know what's done when you see these light golden brown um, flakes in the bottom of the pan and it's you can smell the nuttiness that's coming off of it So now we're gonna let this brown butter cool now. It's really hot It's been steaming and bubbling so we need to let it cool down before we add the rest of our ingredients so I'm gonna set to the, this to the side and I have some brown butter that's cooled already in my mixer bowl fitted with the paddle attachment we're gonna take our dry ingredients and whisk them together so I have in a medium sized bowl, three and three quarter cup of flour. And to that, we're gonna add half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. So they're all gonna go together in the same bowl. And we're just gonna whisk it through. This makes sure that when we add it to the rest of the batter, um, it's not gonna have clumps of ginger or cardamom or salt and everything's evenly distributed. So now that our flour mixture is sifted together, we can go back to our cooled brown butter and add the rest of the ingredients. So to start, we put the brown butter in the bowl and then we have one and a half cups of light brown sugar, two egg yolks plus one whole egg, and then we have vanilla bean paste. Vanilla bean paste is really nice because it's thicker and it has the actual beans from the pod. So when you add it into the batter, it has more of a flavor than just it, say an extract would. So we're gonna turn our mixer on and we're gonna get the butter going and get it a little bit lighter. So right now it's solidified, but it's not, it doesn't look like a, rig, like a stick of butter would. It's not fluffy because it's been melted and brown. So, it's gonna loosen up a little bit and kind of flow around the bowl, which is exactly what you want. The next step is to add in your light brown sugar. So we put that all in at the same time. We want it to get light and fluffy and it's gonna lighten up in flavor. Every so often while you lighten this butter, you need to scrape down the sides of the bowl because it starts to stick on the edges because the paddle doesn't totally get to the whole, all the sides. So just take your rubber spatula and kind of scrape down around the sides of the bowl so that you hit every area and everything's getting into the dough at the same time. That's one of the key things when you're baking is to take away from here, is to pull all this stuff away from the bowl. You want everything always evenly incorporating. That's why we sifted our flour and the dry ingredients together first. Then we add them in together at the same time because they will just be more evenly distributed rather than having big clumps of things in there. So this is looking nice and beautiful. It's, it's light, it's fluffy, it's moving around the bowl. And our next step is to add in the eggs and the egg yolks. But you don't wanna do it all at the same time because again, you'll get clumps. You don't want clumps of eggs, you don't want clumps of butter. So you wanna to try to get one at a time. So we kind of drop one in at a time. That was one egg yolk and it's whipping around the bowl nicely. I see it incorporating and it's getting this nice, beautiful dough going. So then we take, after it goes around for a little while, we're gonna add in another egg yolk. And after this egg yolk goes around, I'm gonna scrape down the bowl again so that we don't get any sugar clumps in the, in the dough, we don't get any butter clumps in the dough. Everything gets incorporated nicely. So this recipe 
recipe is really nice because it has this beautiful spice to it. The, the ground cardamom is freshly ground, hopefully. If you have a spice grinder, you can grind it up yourself. The, the ginger is um, warm and a little bit spicy, and that comes out and it complements really nicely with the brown butter. So I've added in all my eggs, and it's whipping around with the butter and the sugar. And the last thing we need to add is the vanilla bean paste. So we're gonna go ahead and scrape that into the bowl so that it gets incorporated nicely. And I can see those lovely little beans are getting in the dough, which is great. So we're gonna scrape down the bowl one more time just to make sure we got everything in there. And then the last step of this dough is to add in the dry ingredients, which is our flour, cardamom, ginger, salt, and the baking powder. So we add our flour in in three additions to avoid building glue in in the batter. When the mixer is going on, it's moving the batter around and it's creating something called glue in. And glue in forms structure. In something like bread or uh, pizza, you want a lot of glue in because you want a lot of structure. In something like a cookie or cake, you don't want a lot of glue in. So you want to avoid mixing it as much as you can. So we mix it just until we don't see any dry ingredients anymore. And I don't see any more, so I'm gonna stop it. And then we're gonna turn it out onto the counter to knead it together just a little bit so that it's incorporated nicely and we have a nice smooth dough. Then we'll take a couple pieces of parchment paper and roll it out. So we have this batter that's really nice. It's a little crumbly right now, but when we knead it together on the counter, it'll pull it together. So you can see it's this light golden color, which is beautiful because we browned the butter really nicely. Um, and we have everything out here. So now you just take your hands and you kind of push it together so that everything gets incorporated and it kind of creates this singular dough. If you've ever needed, if you've ever needed bread before or any sort of dough, this is sort of the same thing, but you'll notice, like we said, there's no gluten. So there's no like stretchiness, there's no folding. But here we kind of are trying to just pull it together so that it's a cohesive dough. So just a few times, you can see it's a lot smoother than it was a few seconds ago. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So this is gonna make two sheets. So what we're gonna do is divide it in half. And I have one half here and another half here. Now, to avoid making a total mess and to be able to move our dough around nicely, I'm gonna use parchment to roll this dough out on. If you've ever made um, a sugar cookie before and you try rolling it out on the countertop with flour, um, it really makes a giant mess and it's you don't get really nice cookies out of it. So instead, we cut pieces of parchment that are the same size as our sheet and we take the parchment off right now and we're gonna roll we're gonna sandwich it so that this dough is in between it when we roll it out with our rolling pin this is a nice low mess way to move your dough around so we've got this one round on here and you take your rolling pin we're just gonna be pushing it make a little room here you're gonna be pushing it until it fills the whole sheet so we kind of roll this, you can feel the dough is really, it's actually really nice, it feels perfect. And you wanna get it all the way to the edges because you know that's the right thickness of what you're gonna go. We're looking for a thickness of probably like an eighth or a quarter of an inch thick. After we roll out this dough, we're gonna pop it into the freezer so that it gets nice and cold. Um, the next step is to get this firm so that when we use our cutters, we're gonna cut out one bottom round one, and then we're gonna cut out a top one. But this, the difference between the bottom and the top is this one is also gonna have a hole cut out of the center so that it's like a donut. And then they get sandwiched in between some apricot jam so that little pop of apricot jam is gonna come out of the center of them. So we take our sheet tray, and we're just gonna slide this on top and pop it into the freezer and pull it out in maybe 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so now I have my chilled dough. It's really hard, you can see I can pick it up it's straight from the freezer. So what we need to do is pull the parchment off and what I do is pull the top one off and then I flip it over 
so that I get the other side pulled off as well. Because if you try to cut them when they're on the parchment without pulling it off, they'll stick and then it'll be a big mess trying to get a nice clean cookie off. So we pull this parchment off and you can actually reuse this parchment for your baking purposes. So I'm gonna put this parchment down here to get ready to catch our cut cookies. So I have a cookie cutter that's about two inches wide. And then I have another one that's smaller that's about an inch wide. So we wanna cook, we wanna cut the same amount out because they're, it's a sandwich, right? So we start by pressing down and we get these nice like two inch cookies. And you can see how easy they are to move right now because they're hard and the butter is hard because they just came out of the freezer. You can also pop them in the fridge, but I find it's easier to do it from the freezer because they get really nice and cold. So we're gonna cut a lot of these cookies out. And I have two sheets of this. This recipe makes two. So really what you can do is cut one all bottoms and then you can cut one all tops. But you have to work quickly when you have this dough out because it starts to soften really quickly. I can feel it already softening, so I'm just gonna cut as quickly as I can and get it on the tray because once it's on this tray, you don't have to move it again. It's gonna stay there because that's what we're baking it on. So I'm gonna cut out some bottoms. We'll cut out one more and then we'll cut out some tops. Now when you're baking them, you wanna do all bottoms on one tray and you wanna do all tops on another tray. So I'm gonna pull another piece of parchment over for our tops and that'll get slid into the oven as well. So now the difference between the bottoms and the tops is this one has another hole cut in the center. And the easiest way to do this is to put it onto your parchment that you wanna bake it on. And then you take your smaller cutter and you cut this one out. That way you don't have to move that round when it's a little more fragile than the rest of them are. So we're gonna keep cutting these out until we fill up the tray. And then they're gonna get baked in the oven at 350 degrees for probably seven to 10 minutes. Um, you wanna actually put your timer on for about five minutes and then turn the pan around. So the side that was at the, be at the front of the oven will now be at the back of the oven. And that just ensures some like more even cooking. Otherwise you'll get them too brown on one side and not brown enough on the other. Every oven has a hot spot, so you wanna kinda of make sure that you're getting all around in the oven so it doesn't get too hot in one area and too brown. So once we have our trays all filled up, we're gonna pop them in the oven. They're gonna bake for seven to 10 minutes until they're lightly golden brown on the outside. And then we'll put, pull them out, let them cool on a baking rack, and then we'll start filling with some apricot jam. So after we've cut out all these cookies, they're gonna get popped into the oven for seven to 10 minutes to get beautifully browned on the outside. You just are looking for, especially on these cookies, for the edges to be brown, um, and then the centers are gonna be like a light golden brown. So we'll go bring these over to the oven. Okay, so we have our cookies fresh from the oven. I have the bottoms here and the tops together. So what we need to do is flip over all the bottoms so that the part that was touching the sheet pan will now be on the inside of the cookie so that the cookie looks beautiful on all angles. And then we have this lovely apricot jam here. Um, just take a spoon and kind of break it up a little bit so that it's not um, clumpy and hard to work with. When you make it nice and smooth, it'll be beautiful to put in the center. Then we're just gonna take about a teaspoon and place it in the center of each of the cookies. You don't need to worry about getting it all the way to the edges because when you press down with the tops, it'll spread it out for you. And then it'll also pop open in the center of the cookie and kind of come out and look beautiful. So we just go through and pop these all down here. 
And these cookies smell great. You can smell the cardamom and ginger and it's really playing nicely with that brown butter. And I know with this apricot jam, it's just gonna be such a flavor, like burst in your mouth. We're actually gonna do all of these. If you wanted, you can also use a pastry bag. I have filled this one with some apricot jam. You can pipe it down if you have one on hand. If not, the spoon works just as well. And I know everybody has a spoon at home. So then we take these tops and we just sandwich it in the cookies and kind of kind of smooth it a little bit with the top cookie and press it down. And it's as easy as that. So then you go through with each of them, kind of press it down. You see that jam coming out in the center. That's exactly what you want. After you've sandwiched a few, you're gonna put them all onto your beautiful platter and you're gonna take a little bit of confectioner sugar and sprinkle it over the top so that they get a beautiful sheen. Um, where you sprinkle onto the jam is actually gonna disappear because it dissolves in. And you just go and, and sprinkle it right over the top. Now this is beautiful, it's like snow. Okay, so then you have these beautiful little cookies um, that are perfect for the season, for winter. They're nice because you have all these beautiful warm spices that remind you of winter and they smell so nice in your house. Uh, the jam is perfect for the season as well because it's like that, that um, apricots are in season and it just shines so nicely with the cookies. Um, and there you have it. There's your brown butter Linzer cookies.